In honor of having Tina on the show today, I'm going to be reading the first chapter of Condemning the Heavens. Uh, I do want to preface that it has a very different tone reading the first chapter without reading the prologue. So you can listen to this, but if you're really wanting to know what's going on and kind of catch some of the subtlety in the chapter, you should go read the prologue before you start going from chapter one. So don't count my chapter one reading as your start. You should start at chapter zero and go from there. Uh, I do want to say that uh, you can go to Tina Lange uh, is a YouTube uh, channel and she's had a pro voiceover artist do the prologue and chapter one reading on her YouTube channel so you can check that out. Obviously I'm still going to do one here for you guys because uh, obviously if you're listening you don't hate my voice that much even though I hate my voice but you know that's how podcasting goes. So without further ado we're going to be talking about Condemning the Heavens. Let me go ahead and read you a little bit of the synopsis of the story here before we get started. So, in the continent of Chang'an, humans had lived as livestock and slaves to the primordial beasts. These beasts were ferocious, bloodthirsty, and overwhelmingly powerful, but even so, the humans managed to prevail in the face of despair. As the human's race grew stronger and the primordial beasts fought back with relentless fierceness, rousing beast hordes to engage in frenzied battles over the land, every single child on the continent was taught martial arts for the sake of fighting these primordial beasts. Yet many of them were sent straight to their death because, you know people die. Uh, in this world filled with constant battle, a young boy was born. This young boy was hoping to become the most outstanding cultivator, but who would have thought that his talent was so poor that he could not even cultivate? As the boy was filled with, filled with despair over his unfortunate situation, a life-changing event occurred, which would forever leave a scar in his mind, pushing him to transcend his limits and grow to become a legend. So, everyone who voted in the poll last week who said, uh, just plain hard work, uh, there you go, guys. This is a novel for you, so without further ado, let's check it out. Chapter 1, Tian Kong City. Trying to pry open his eyes, Xu Wei woke up with a thundering headache. He could not help but groan slightly as his head throbbed heavily, making him feel as if his entire body was floating and weightless. This was while his head, on the other hand, felt as if hundreds of primordial beasts were gnawing on it at the same time. Xu Wei laid still, trying to overcome the throbbing pain in his head, but it seemed that the headache was stubborn. An unknown amount of time passed before he managed to overcome the pain and slightly open his eyes. He only managed to open his eyes slightly before a bright light forced him to shut them again. He tried to open his eyes once more, yet the same result occurred. Every time he tried, the world outside shone so strongly that he had to close them again out of reflex, and it took a lot of energy just to force them open one more time. The shining light was like daggers that shot into his head, making his headache erupt with pain once more, and after every attempt he needed to calm down before he could try again. Sighing, Xu Wei could not think clearly. His mind was a muddled mess, and his body was racked with pain. The only thing he knew was that he needed to open his eyes and only after gathering every last shred of energy available to him and from his frail body did he ate, did he pry them open finally a sharp pain erupted in his head once more as the rays of light shone down on him but Shu Wei used his willpower to create a force to stay keep his eyes open causing tears to stream down his cheeks where am i Shu Wei muttered to himself confused as he looked around the room in which he had wakened the room was pretty big. It was beautifully adorned with blue silken curtains and chairs with embroidered cushions. Shu Wei laid on a large soft bed with blue embroidered linen and pillows, and against the wall was a desk made of some sort of wood that he had never seen before. Shu Wei's eyes roamed across the room and he could not help but frown as his messy thoughts slowly straightened out. Nothing here looks familiar, he said to himself, but as more and more of his memories became clearer, his face paled and he suddenly lifted his hands and checked his body. He was sitting in the bed wearing a white robe with blue embroidery of dragons. These colors matched the room, and all of them were the finest quality. Upon touching the fabric that the robe was made of, he could feel that it was the finest silk he had ever held in his hands. But when he tried to remember how he knew that this was much finer than anything else he had ever touched, he felt a sharp pain in his head. Shu Wei doubled over and held his head in his hands as he grit his teeth, refusing to let out a scream. The more he tried to remember, the more pain increased. Who? Who am I? Shu Wei stopped trying to remember, and instead he went through the memories he had in his mind, but he was severely shocked. He found that he could speak a certain language. He remembered the daily life of the continent he lived on, and he knew about the fight between the humans and the primordial beasts. He knew that every expert had the duty to fight these beasts when they turned 16, and he was aware that he was from the kingdom of Heping. He knew that he was born on the continent of Chang'an, 
and in the kingdom of He Ping. The kingdom of He Ping was split into the administrative regions of the northern, eastern, western, and southern territories. Apart from the kingdom of He Ping, there were plenty of other kingdoms and empires on the Chang'an continent, but none of them were at war with one another as all human resources went into fighting the primordial beasts. The more he remembered, the more memories flooded in his mind, but he frowned. He could not remember anything about himself, and when he tried to think about his past, a searing pain burned into his mind, alongside a single image of a small village that was located in the northern taiga. It was filled with snow, and he had a faint feeling belonging to this village, but there were no people, no names, and no family connections. Shu Wei staggered to his feet and scoured the entire room. Everything he came across was new to him, and the light was also different from what he was used to. Although he was unaware of who he was, he was completely sure that everything around him was foreign. This was not his home, nor was it somewhere he belonged. Once again, the image of a snowy village appeared in his mind and he startled panicking. Shu Wei had the impression that if he wished to get his memory back, then he had to find the village that kept appearing in his mind. Shu Wei was only ten year old child, and he was suddenly in the middle of an unknown world. His heart burned with anxiety. He did not know who he was, and he was terrified as to why he did not remember anything. Although he knew that remembering things would cause him to suffer pain, he still sat down in the middle of the room and covered his ears with his hands. He closed his eyes and tried to think very hard. He was trying to remember even the slightest clue as to who he was. The more he thought about it, the more intense the pain came. But he did not give up, yet after trying for a full half hour where his body had become constantly wrecked with pain, he gave up. The only thing that had come to mind was the picture of the tranquil town covered in snow. Although he felt that this town was familiar, filling him with a feeling of inexplicable attachment to the snowy place, he had no memories of it. No matter how deep within his mind he searched, he had no memories at all. Everything was blank, yet he had plenty of knowledge in his mind. None of this knowledge was about himself, though. His curiosity stirred as he moved towards a mirror that was leaning against the wall in a corner of the room. As he looked at himself, he instantly guessed that he was no younger than nine, but he couldn't be older than twelve either. He tried once more to remember, but the result was the same as before. All he got was a vague image of a snowy town. That town has to be in the Northern Territory somewhere, Shu Wei mumbled to himself as he stared, started to fully examine himself in the mirror. While he wouldn't call himself a pretty boy, he was relatively handsome. He had long black hair that scattered down his back, and it also framed his delicate face. His eyes were as dark as the moonless night, and his lips had a healthy, rosy color to them. His body was neither tall nor short for a person his age. He wasn't very muscular, but he still had some muscle on his body, which made him seem healthy and well proportioned. After looking at himself in the mirror, Shu Wei calmed down somewhat. He had been given a, a room with every necessity that one could need. He was wearing luxurious clothes, and he seemed as if he had been well-fed and attended to with care. I'm beating treated very well here, Shu Wei mumbled to himself as he stopped looking at the mirror and instead moved towards the window that took up quite a bit of space in one of the walls. The window had set of curtains covering them, and although they were translucent and did not block the light, they ensured that no one could look in or out. Lifting the curtains, Shu Wei looked outside. He found that he was in a beautiful old building in a large city. The noises from the bustling streets in the city were drifting through the window now that the curtains had been lifted, and the scents of all kinds of foods wafted through the air. In the sky above the city hung the sun, throwing ray after ray of scorching hot sunlight down on the city that laid out before it. But although the sun was scorching hot and Shu Wei had a hard time dealing with the heat, he saw that the citizens were down on the street, were not even breaking a sweat, even while hard at work under the sun. Clearly, they were all used to this kind of climate. Shu Wei could see the city that lay outside the walls of the mansion he was within, but he was astonished by the sheer size of the mansion itself. It was large and had a beautiful garden surrounding it. There was a lake and even guards were patrolling the area. As Shu Wei looked around the surrounding areas with curiosity, he heard the door behind him open. He jumped in fright as he turned around. His heart was hammering in his chest and his eyes were wide open as he stared at the man who had entered the room. In front of him was an extremely handsome young man. He seemed to be no older than 25 years of age and his hair shone in the light that reflected through the room. His eyes were a beautiful blue like the deep ocean and his skin so pale it looked like porcelain. As his, on his lips was a gentle smile and within the blue eyes that looked at Shu Wei it was doting affection. You are awake, he exclaimed excitedly as he went in, but Shu Wei retreated a few steps until he was right next to the window, and if he retreated any further he would definitely fall out. Shu Wei felt that he knew this person, he felt that there was a dangerous air to him though, but when he searched his memories he realized he had never met this man before. Who are you? Shu Wei asked tentatively. He was on guard against this handsome man, but he also felt that he would not do anything to him. The doting affection within the young man's eyes said that he held no hostile emotions. But then why was Shu Wei so frightened just now? <laughs> you forgot me? The man asked with a voice that was filmed with disbelief, his eyes showing hints of sadness, and he instantly stopped in his tracks. Little Wei, are you okay? The man asked again, causing Shu Wei to frown and shake his head. He was filmed with a mixed emotions. A part of him screamed to escape from where he was this instant, while another part of him wished to stay. It's clear that this man knew him, and he wished to know more too. This man could be his ticket to getting his memories back. 
Shu Wei sighed as he sat down on the ground and crossed his legs. He could feel a powerful ripple coming from the body of this young man, and it was clear that there were no chances of escaping, even if he tried. Since this was the case, Shu Wei shook his head and decided to be honest with the man that seemed to know him. He might end up getting some information about himself. I, f I forgot everything. Who, who am I? Who are you? Where am I? And what's going on? Shu Wei was very calm considering that he'd forgotten everything, and hearing his questions, the handsome man nodded his head in high praise of his ability to c stay calm in such a situation. You are Shu Wei, my nephew, the handsome man said with a sigh. Your mother died when she gave birth to you, so you lived with your father, who was an apothecary in the Northern Territory. Unfortunately, he had an accident during one of his herb-gathering missions and was killed by a beast horde led by a primordial beast. The handsome man had a face filled with, filled with pain as he told the child this. When I heard about it, I came directly to pick you up. I'm your only living relative, and I will look after you. The shock of losing your father must have been a terrible experience for you. All the way from the Northern Territory to here, you never uttered a single word. And when you arrived here, you shut yourself up in this room? Hearing this, everything seemed unreal to Shu Wei. He had no parents, but he could feel the concern and care in the voice of this uncle of his. Hearing it, he instantly felt better, although he grieved over the fact that his father had died. It was hard to truly grieve over a father he had forgotten everything about. Looking at the child, a strange gleam appeared in the eyes of the uncle before it rapidly vanished and his concern returned. My name is Xiao Lei, but you can call me Uncle Lei. We are currently still within the kingdom of Heping, but no longer in the Northern Territory. We are in the Southern Territory, in a city named Tiang Kong. It is one of the largest cities in the Southern Territory. Looking at the child who was still seated on the ground, Xiao Lei turned quiet and waited for the child to say something. It was clear that he was digesting the information he had been giving, and all of it must have come as quite a shock to the young boy. Therefore, letting him take his time to accept it was the best course of action. I see, Xu Wei murmured. I'm sorry for having become a burden to you, he sighed, but Xiao Lei just shook his head and smiled. You're no burden. I have no family, and thus it'll be nice to have someone to share this large house with. Hearing this, the child felt warm in his heart. Although he was an orphan, he was not alone, and he stood up and bowed his deeply to his uncle. Thank you for taking care of me, he said with heartfelt gratitude. To make up for this, I will train extra hard with the other youths. I will become an outstanding talent and will kill many primordial beasts in your name. Making a promise like this, the face of his uncle turned strange for a moment, yet... Right after it turned to normal and he sighed. You don't remember this either, he asked as gently as he went closer to the child. You are unable to cultivate. I have searched everywhere for a cultivation method that will allow you for you to cultivate, but so far I've not found any. I, I cannot cultivate? Shu Wei asked, astonished, but Xiao Lei stuck his head. No, you cannot cultivate, he sighed. Hearing this, the small child who had hoped to become a true hero was depressed as he was incapable of even taking one step towards this dream. Well, why don't you come with me to get something to eat? Even if you are incapable of cultivating, I'll think of something for you, Xiao Lei said gently. Xu Wei, who was filled with despair, slowly nodded his head. To not be able to cultivate truly made one the scum of society. If you could not cultivate, it was impossible for you to do your duty against the primordial beasts. And not only this, it was also impossible to become a strong hero. The only safety that Xu Wei would have came from his uncle. But even so, he would be bullied by the other children his age. Sighing, Shu Wei had a hard time accepting this, but he could do nothing but curse his fate. And that's chapter one, guys. Uh, definitely with the prologue, this whole scene is very different because in the prologue, you kind of get a little bit of a story into who Xiao Lei is and what he's done. Uh, I'm not going to say anything else. You should check it out. I'll just leave you with that little teaser. Um, or a